Welcome back to the channel, everyone. Today, we're talking all about Arc Force. Yes, embrace the power of the dark side of the Arc Force. Don't listen to him. Join the soft side of the Arc Force where your puddle will flow with clarity instead of being powered by hatred and greed. Nonsense, turn up the power of the Arc Force. Feel the crispness in your arc. Burn away your problems, dig. Burn! You were my brother! You were sent here to destroy the dark side of the Arc Force, not join it! Ah! Whoa, 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 time out, time out, guys. This is not what we're talking about. We're answering questions from inside the Weld app, and Peter here, he's dealing with some 6010 stuff and wondering what Arc Force is all about and when they should go to the negative side, positive side, sauce to be Chris. We're not doing all this nonsense. None of that. I don't know where we find these people. Now what even is Arc Force? Arc Control, Dig, Soft, Crisp, it's all the same thing. It's all the machine's ability to give you additional amperage at lower voltage. So that means the closer your electrode gets to the workpiece, the more amperage that the machine can provide to hopefully prevent it from stubbing out or sticking or spitting, sputtering. Or if you're doing an open root weld, it'll give you those extra beans so you can keep that rod alive and thriving and you can get the right joint penetration into the backside of your groove. Now this may look a little bit different depending on what type of machine that you're using. You might have a gauge that says it goes to the negative side or positive side, or you might have a percentage. Arc force isn't a new feature on welding machines. A lot of welding machines have arc force and it just looks a little bit different on the display or whether it's a knob or it's digital or whatever, but it all is the same kind of gist to it. This Typhoon, for example, from Everlast, the display when you get to the stick menu is right there in the corner and you can get it from one screen. Whereas this Esau Rebel 285, it's got the same feature as far as Arc Force, you just have to go through a couple menu items to find it and turn it up. But this is, these machines both have that as a percentage of zero to 100%. 100 being all the way crisp or Arc Force all the way on, and you're gonna have a lot more dig to it or going all the way to zero to having zero arc force. Now, the ESOB Ruffian, on the other hand, has a different way. It's the same arc force, but it either goes to the negative side or the positive side. So you can go all the way to negative 10 for really soft or all the way to positive 10 for really crisp or turning up the dig. A lot of Lincoln machines have a knob that has the same thing and it has those same values of zero to 10. Some machines may just say that soft or crisp, but they all do the same thing. Turning it up, it's gonna give it more dig. Turning it soft, it's just kinda kind of flow, and depending on the electrode, maybe either make or break you. So these machines having as many features as they already have, my advice to you is to just start with no arc force at all. Just see how these things run without. Some machines are punchier than others and don't even need arc force. For some machines, they need that arc force to help really do some other things that they're not really supposed to be capable of, but it may help. But you don't need it. Some machines, like I said, are more punchy than others, and Arc Force is just a fine tune setting on if, if you need it or you don't. Again, playing with it, just learning, just do it without so that you understand what it looks like without. But we're gonna see what it looks like doing on either side of the soft or the crisp with both the 6010 or 7018. We ran one rod of each of these on either the all the way to zero with soft or all the way to 100% with the ESOB 285IC. And we're gonna see if we can even really tell the difference of what those beads look like. So looking at our experiment at 0% arc force, we have our 6010-7018 and 100% arc force 6010-7018. I didn't have a problem running either bead with either amount of arc force. They didn't stick or spit or sputter. They ran very much the same. The only difference is the 7018 was a little bit more of an aggressive sparkler and the 6010 was a little bit more violent. You can see we have a little bit more buckshot on the plate. So there is that. Staying away from 100% arc force, I think altogether is something to not do. But again, it's not something that you even need whatsoever. It's just something to adjust depending on what situation or what electrode you're doing. 
The biggest difference that I see here is that the 6010 on the 0% was actually wider than it is on the 100%, and that's actually reversed. It was wider on the 7018 at 100% and skinnier of a bead at 0% arc force. But nonetheless, just seeing kind of what's going on here, honestly, 100% just seems a little bit more volatile, and keeping things basic is where I like to stay. While welding a bead on a piece of plate may not see the biggest differences, where I like to use arc forces when I'm pipe welding, especially when I'm doing open roots. Now my arc force is necessary, instead of using your amperage, which you can kind of either change, you can either bump up your amps or use maybe more arc force. But it's the capability of having more power at that closer arc length, which is what I'm doing that open root for. I'm really shoving that rod in there. So no matter if I'm either just dragging that electrode, I might have more arc force like 75%, or if the gap's a little bigger, I might start stepping that root pass in. And instead of changing my amperage, I'm just gonna bump down that arc force, maybe somewhere around 50%. Now, as I work towards that hot pass, depending on where I was at then, I might adjust that arc force, but now we're getting into so many crazy variables, it's just unnecessary. Now, towards the cap, I will say I like to have on a 7018 way towards the soft side. On this type of machine, somewhere around 30% as far as the arc force, because I just feel like it's just a softer arc. It's not as violent, it doesn't put as much BBs or buckshot on the pipe. So for a 7018, typically in the fills, and the caps, I like to stay towards the soft side and as far as the 6010 or 8010 or that type of rod, we're gonna be staying a lot more on the crisp side. But again, it doesn't matter what you're doing, guys, you can always start with nothing. Don't even worry about arc force whatsoever if you haven't figured out how to use the variables all one and the same, okay? There's a lot of stuff that goes into welding. Arc force is one of them. If you haven't got the other variables down, see how arc force can help you after you figure out how to master it without it. Cause you never know when you get a machine that doesn't have it in general. And other welders way before us didn't need it and didn't bother using it. So it's just fancy. It's just nice to have around occasionally. I hope that answered your question, Peter. We went a little bit more in depth into arc force. Guys, if you have any questions, run over to the app. I'd be happy to answer them here on the YouTube channel. And if I don't get to them, someone else will. Thanks for watching. See you on the next one.